Hello and welcome to my channel, The Curious Coder. In this video, I'll be discussing about the differences between a list, a set, and a map. Now, list is an interface. Some of its implementations are array list, linked list, vector. Set is also an interface. Some of its implementations are hash set, tree set, linked hash set. And map is also an interface. Its implementations are hash map, hash table, linked hash map, etc. Okay. So I have created all three of them. And uh, if I go inside this list, you will see that list is an interface and we have multiple implementations. Okay. So you will find array list. We'll find linked list. We can find vector. Okay. So there are these many implementations and the most commonly used one is array list. Okay. So in this video, when I'm talking about a list, I'll be mainly talking about an array list. Similarly for set, I'll be talking about a hash set and for a map, I'll be talking about a hash map. Okay. Now similarly set is also an interface and you can see that it also has a lot of implementations. So here we will find hash set. Okay. Somewhere hash set or linked hash set. Similarly, uh, there is tree set. Okay. And in the same way, map is also an interface and it also has a lot of implementations. So we can see concurrent hash map. We can have a hash map, a hash table. We'll also have a linked hash map. Okay. So all these things. All right. Now, if I talk about how we insert values inside them, so list maintains the insertion order, but most of the implementations of set and map does not maintain the insertion order. Okay, let me show you. Let's say I add some values list dot add three. Okay. Then list dot add, let's say two. I'll just copy paste. Right. Yeah. So let me take unique values for now. Let's say this is nine, this is eleven, and this is twelve. Okay. So these are some random values that I've added and uh, let me not add it in a sorted way. Let's say this one is minus nine. Okay. So I've added in some random order. Similarly, if I add inside a set, so we can have set dot add four, set dot add, let's say seven, and I'll just copy paste again. Five. Okay, so we can have some six or let's say 27 or 70. All right, so we use add method for both list as well as set, but in case of a map, we have to add a key value pair. Okay, so list added add some value, set also add some value, but in case of a map, we add key value pairs. Okay, so for that, we have a method put, so I can just put random values. So I've taken both key as well as value as integer. Okay. So I'll just add some values. Let's say two comma seven. And uh, similarly, we can have multiple values. All right. I'll take a different key. Three comma 17. Let's say 12 comma minus seven minus two comma nine or maybe zero comma eight okay so i have added values in all the three data structures and what i'll do is we'll just loop on all three of them and we'll see that whether or not the insertion order is maintained okay so there are different ways of traversing over these data structures i'll use a very simple one which i find the most easy in terms of syntax okay and i'll keep it same for all three of them so we'll just do list dot for each because for each element, I will just print that particular element. All right, like this. So list dot for each for every element, we'll just print that element. Similarly, set dot for each. We'll just take element and again, we are going to print every element. Okay, like this. All right, similarly for map. For map, we have a key value pair. So we'll take two arguments here, key and a value. 
and I'll just write a print statement where I'm printing both of them. Okay, something like this. Print ln, I'll just add key as a prefix and then key. Then similarly, value. Okay, I'll just give some space here. Okay, value and the value. All right. So one by one, we'll loop on each of them and we'll be printing whatever is present inside these data structures. Okay, so if I run my code. All right, so first let's let's check for the list. So for the list, you will see that the order is 3, 2, minus 9, 11 and 12. So the order is maintained. Okay, 3, 2, minus 9, 11 and 12. For the set, we added in this order 4, 7, 6, 27 and 17. But you will see that these are printed in some random order. Okay, the order is that 17 is printed first, then we print 4, then 6, then 7. So as I told you, in case of a set, the insertion order is not maintained. Okay. Similarly, for a map as well, you will see that the key value pairs are also printed in some random order. Okay. We have 0, 8 as the first one, then minus 2, 9, then 2, 7. Okay. So it's just a random order. All right. So this is the difference for a list. The order is maintained, but for a set and a map, the insertion order is not maintained. Okay. Now, Obviously, there are some exceptions here. I'm only talking about a hash set and a hash map, but in case of a tree set or in case of a linked hash set, the order is maintained. Okay. So for a linked hash set, the exact insertion order is maintained and for a tree set, they're actually stored in a sorted order. Similarly, for a linked hash map, the insertion order is maintained and for a tree map, they're, they're stored in a sorted order based on the keys. Okay, so I'm not going through all of them, but I just want to let you know that this here we are only talking about hash map, hash set and array list. All right. Now list allows us to have duplicate elements. Set does not allow us to have duplicate values and map does not allow us to have duplicate keys. Okay. So let's say I just change these values. Let's say I make it 11 and I make this also as 11. Okay. And here in the set, I'll make these two as 27. All right. Similarly, in the map, I'll make these, uh, this was a key two. So I'll make another key as two. Okay, so we have two comma seven and two comma eight. Okay. Now if I print it. All right. So you will see that three, two, 11, 11 and 11. So three, two, 11, 11 and 11 are printed. So list allows us to have duplicate values in case of a set. There is no error. They are printed, but you will see that 27 is printed only once. Okay. So in set, we cannot have duplicate values. Even if you add a duplicate into it, it will only consider it once. Okay. So that is why you will see that it's printed in a random order and 27 is printed only once. Okay. Similarly in a map, you will see that for two, for the key as two, only eight is printed because whatever value you give latest, that value is only taken. Okay, so initially in the map, it would have added the key two and the value seven against it. But when you wrote this again, two comma eight, then it will re just replace seven with eight. Okay, but it will not keep, not keep duplicate keys. All right, but let's say I just, you know, add another key value pair. Let's say the key is some random, it is 19 and I add eight again. Okay. So the value is being repeated. So in this case, in this case, you will see that this is allowed. Okay. Multiple values are allowed. We can have eight here as well as here again, but duplicate keys are not allowed. Okay. That is the logic. So I'll just give a recap in case of a list, we can have duplicate values in case of a set. We can add duplicate values, but it will be, it will only consider it once. So it will only have unique values. And in case of a map, we cannot have duplicate keys, but we can have duplicate values. Okay. Now coming to the next point, list allows us to have multiple null values, but most implementations of set allow only one null value and most implementations of map allow only one null key, but multiple null values. All right, let me show you this. 
again let's say i try to add a null value okay let's dot add null similarly uh, first let me just remove this okay no point keeping two values and i just do set dot add null all right similarly let me just remove this and uh, what i'll do is i'll do map dot put null comma seven okay now if i run it great so you will see that in case of a list the order is maintained 3 2 11 11 11 and null is printed okay similarly for set as well we added null once and that null is printed and we have all these values 4 7 6 and 27 okay but in some random order similarly for a map as well you will see that we have this null entry okay where the key is null so all three of them allows us to have null values uh, and map allows us to have null key but the only difference is that if I add it again, let's say like this, list dot add null. Okay. But if I try to add the null value again, similarly for a map, if I try to put some null key and some random value, okay, let's say 12. All right. Now if I run it and I'll also just differentiate between this, this here we are printing the list. Okay, I'll write it like this list plus element and here let's say set plus element okay now if I run this great so we will see that for the list multiple null values are allowed okay but for a set only one null value is allowed again a null value is not printed for a set because as I told you, set only take unique values. So that rule is also applicable for null values. Okay, so null values cannot be duplicate as well. They are also present only once. Okay, so that is why we have only one null case in case of a set. Similarly, for a map, we have added null key twice. So whichever value we added at the last, that one is being printed here. Okay, so but this also does not take two null keys. All right. Now again, there is some exception like tree set does not even allow a single null value. Okay. In a tree map, we can, uh, in a, in a hash set, we can even add one null value, but in tree set, you cannot even add a single null value. Similarly for a tree map, you cannot even add a single null key. Okay. That is an exception. Now, one more thing I want to show you, we can, we cannot have multiple null keys that we just saw, but we can have multiple null values. Okay, so again, if I just take some other key, let's say minus one and I put a null or let me not add more. I'll just change it here. Let's say we have null and this also we have null again. Okay, if I print this. Great. So you will see that this is allowed. We can have multiple null values in a map, but we cannot have multiple null keys. All right, that's the logic. Coming to the next point, list and set extend a parent interface named collection, but map does not. Okay, let me show you. You can see if I go inside this interface list, this extends another interface named collection. Okay, similarly, set also extends this interface collection, but if we go inside map, this does not extend any interface. Okay, now why is this collection so important? See, this is an interface that was introduced in Java 8 and it, it actually allows us to have functional programming. So it has many methods inside it, which the list and set can use, but map cannot use like iterator and many other things. But one key important feature is that it, it gave us a stream API. Okay. So this list and set can be converted into a stream and we can use all the features that are provided for stream. Okay, so I'm not going to go into that. You can study that in some other video, but the point is that these two interfaces extend the collection and because of collection, we can convert these two into a stream just by calling the stream method. But that is not the case of map. All right. Now hash map and hash set use hashing while inserting and fetching entries, whereas list does not. When we add an element to a list, it is simply appended at the end or at a specific index if provided. There is no hashing involved. 
However, when we add an entry to a set or a map, the key is passed to a hash function. This function generates a hash value, basically a small integer value, which is considered the index where this entry will be stored internally. Now this point will become much clearer when we discuss their internal implementations in the next difference. So let's move ahead. ArrayList is internally backed by a resizable array. HashMap is internally implemented as an array of buckets where each bucket is a linked list. And HashSet is internally backed by a HashMap where each element is considered as a key. Now ArrayList is simple. As soon as you add a value, an array is created internally of capacity 10. When you keep on adding the values, eventually the capacity is full and then a new array is created with 50% extra capacity and all the elements are copied there. In the case of a map, the key is passed to a hash function which generates a hash value. This hash value is then used to determine the index of the internal array where the entry will be stored. Sometimes different keys can produce the same hash value. This situation is called a hash collision. Only when a collision occurs, multiple entries are stored at the same index using a linked list. Now if this linked list grows beyond a certain threshold, it is converted into a balance tree to improve the search performance. I have explained this entire process in detail in my other video. Please check it out as this is a very important interview question. Hash set works in a similar way. Internally it uses a hash map. The only difference is that instead of storing key value pairs, hash set stores only keys with a constant dummy value internally. Now coming to the last point. Time complexity. In a list, specifically array list, when we add an element at the end, the time complexity is O of 1 on average because the element is added at the last index. However, if we add an element in between, all the elements to its right need to be shifted, making the time complexity O of n. Similarly, if we want to search or delete a particular element from a list, the time complexity will be O of n because we may need to traverse the entire list to find that element, right? However, in the case of a set or a map, insert, search, delete, all three operations are O of 1 on average. This is because if you have the key, you can directly locate the bucket and you could just insert, search or delete whatever you want to do. However, there is an exception. If there are a lot of hash collisions, then you might have to traverse on the linked list, which might increase the time complexity a little bit. Okay, but other than that, the time complexity will be O of 1. So these are all the differences between a list set and a map. I hope you liked the video. And if you want more Java core interview questions, please follow my channel, The Curious Coder.